we're here today. First of all, welcome, John. Thank um, you. I, I want to say, um, first of all, I just want to thank um, Danny Cowley and Nikki Cowley uh, for their contribution to Portsmouth Football Club. They have um, uh, obviously made a tremendous connection coming out of COVID, uh, you know, re-establishing a connection with the fan base, which is hugely important, the local community. And they uh, did a huge amount, not just for the football club, but for the city of Portsmouth. And I think that will guarantee them a fond welcome uh, whenever they come back to Fratton Park. And, uh, you know, it's very difficult when you, you lose colleagues that you've worked with for some time. But I think that, that uh, reception they will always get when they come back here is, is well assured. And then secondly, um, I really want to thank um, Simon Bassey. Uh, Simon uh, stood up to the mark. Um, it's always very an uneasy period for any person who takes over as a caretaker, uh, a, a manager, particularly uh, you know, when you don't know what's going to be happening down the line. So um, but Simon did that. He took the team to Spurs and a couple of games to Bolton. Um, I think the team played very, very proudly at Spurs. And um, you know that will always live probably long in Simon's memory. And of course, Lorenzo Dolcetti, a uh, very talented uh, coach, I'm sure, um, who's going through his licenses at the moment and I'm sure has got a, a, a good future in the game. And uh, of course, Simon and Lorenzo will always be very welcome back at the stadium. Um, so I wanted to say that first of all, but uh, we are really, really excited to be introducing you to, to John today. Um, I know that probably this has come as a bit of a surprise over the last sort of 24 hours when the story started to break. And I thought it would be helpful just to take you through the process, take you through uh, why you know we're taking our time. It's been as thorough and as diligent uh, as I possibly could do it. Um, I've been supported through it, throughout it with Rich uh, and also with Tony Brown. Uh, we've done most of our business away from Fratton Park, away from Portsmouth. We've travelled up and down the country uh, to meet to people, to speak to people. We've also t spent a lot of time taking uh, due diligence, taking references of people in the game who knew the various uh, people that we were speaking to. Um, I think um, the candidate profile that we spoke, we spoke to um, a number of different people. Some of the people that we initially spoke to, we never really got to see because they declared an interest in um, either not wanting to come to Portsmouth because they were waiting for opportunities in the Premier League. Um, or in the higher ends of the championship with jobs that they felt for their representatives or themselves were imminent. There were other people who were really, really happy um, in the jobs they're currently doing as well. So um, we moved on to looking at, um, from all the applications that we had, aligned to the applica uh, those that we'd identified at the start of the process, because it wasn't just waiting for uh, people to contact us. We already knew the type of person that we wanted to speak to as well, uh, as well as, um, the contacts I've got in the game, Rich has obviously had, had, had got a wealth of network, not least through all the work that he does with the FA on the UEFA Pro Licence course, speaking to various coaches, so he's got a good understanding of what looks good. I um, worked with Rich and Tony, we drew up a set of criteria as to what we were looking for. Um, I think ultimately, and you know, the, the, the most important thing probably was somebody who wanted to come to Portsmouth, who wanted to come to Fratton Park, who believed in the vision, believed in the ambition, uh, was keen to work within the new structure, the new footballing strategy that we've got in place with a sporting director, uh, and uh, wasn't going to use this opportunity as a stepping stone to a bigger job, someone who is going to be prepared to commit to the long term. And there are a lot of people up there, out there probably who would see this, yeah, I, I, it's a bit of a quick fix in their careers, and perhaps they wanted to, uh, to use this to go on to other things higher up. But we want to take Portsmouth as high as we possibly can, and we want someone to come with us on that journey. So that was hugely important in terms of when we were looking at criteria. Um, I've talked about the structure, being able to work, with, work within that. Uh, there were other key factors as well which were important. Um, we're looking to establish an identity. We're looking to establish you know, a brand of football that will serve us for the long term. We don't want to be in a situation where every time you know, a manager, a head coach comes and goes, that we get into a situation where we have to reboot, restart, and go again. Uh, and that's why we've got a sporting director in place um, to oversee that side of things and get that identity. And then, you know, working with the coach uh, to enable them to uh, develop their style of football. And, you know, we want to have an identity which sees us playing off the front foot, sees us, you know, being aggressive, uh, sees us playing a fast brand of football which Portsmouth supporters want to see and can ident identify with. And I, I don't think we've seen enough of that over recent years. And I think, you know, you look at it and you just wonder 
what we're doing. And if we're thinking that, you know, we wondered how much that was permeating through to, to other people in the football club as well. So that was hugely important that we get that identity right, we get that culture right going forward. And I think we've got to win games. We, 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 you know, we, we haven't won in 10 games, so we have to be very, very mindful that you know, we, can, we, we can get into that position where we start winning. Because at the end of the day, we're only nine points off the playoffs. Seems a lot, but if you win a few games, you're very soon back up there, and we do have the, um, we do have the, we do have the uh, uh, games, in, games in hand as well. But there's no shotgun to uh, anybody's head here to go out and say you've got to do it. What we've got to do first of all is start winning football matches and climb the table and see where it takes us because this is not a short-term appointment. This is a long-term appointment that can look through, you know, next, you know, through the rest of this season in the short term, into the medium term, into next year and beyond that as well. So that, again, was hugely important that someone could work with us. And I think the other thing about our strategy was we really want to start to look at recruiting young emerging talent, have a better balance in the team than what we previously um, had, you know, to get some really strong assets into the football club. And uh, we've seen that at the beginning of the window, the likes of signing somebody like Riley Taylor coming in, somebody that uh, Rich has been tracking, and indeed the previous team were, were looking at as well. And that is the identity kit. Go out, you know, we can look at some of this talent. We don't mind paying fees for them uh, and giving them opportunities. And, you know, not of those players, we want to be first team ready coming into the squad. So. All those things in terms of the criteria were, were hugely important. And then you look at the different people, you meet them, and you, you reconcile everybody against, uh, does that fit? And uh, you know, we got to a stage where we got down to a final short list in terms of people we wanted to see. It's took, everyone says, it's, you know, a lot of people are saying you took your time, you took two weeks. But I had to do that if this was going to be absolutely you know, the best appointment I could possibly make. And each night I went home. Uh, very late at night, <laughs> but started to just to say, I'm doing the right thing in terms of the people we're thinking about. And what you do is, um, you know, you just go back to your criteria again, and you, then you trust your judgment, and then you start to uh, trust the process, um, which, is, which is hugely important in what you're doing. And that helps you arrive at a decision. And we've been bold, there's no doubt about it, but we're bold because we can't keep doing the same things again. I'm very open-minded in terms of the way that you look at um, you, you look at this sort of situation. Yes, we looked at experienced managers. Yes, we spoke to experienced managers. Yes, we spoke to coaches um, who were you know up and coming, and we spoke to you know some people uh, as well that um, you know were, were, were just looking for that opportunity. And um, you know, I, I was just really really conscious that if you keep doing the same same thing again, then you're never going to propel yourself forward. And the football club's not been in the championship now for 10 years, 11 seasons. Um, so we have to try and look at maybe doing something a little bit different. And, uh, and, 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 and we believe that we can then create the long-term strategy, the conditions for success that will drive the football club forward. Uh, and uh, we believe that John is a really exciting, uh, passionate, he's a very inspired in, in, in individual. Um, he knows how to relate to players. He's a real leader in terms of what he's achieved as club captain in his career, chairman of the PFA, uh, and uh, you know he holds the highest coaching qualification uh, that you can possibly get in the UEFA Pro <coughs> License. So he's been out there, he's had some ex experience in coaching, working with players, and we believe this is now the right time for John to come into Portsmouth Football Club and take us forward. So I'm hugely excited. Um, I think it, I'm, I'm really proud um, you know, in terms of the way we've gone about the process. Anything you do, whenever you recruit any manager, it always carries a risk. You can take the most experienced manager in the country who's had success but maybe not had the same success in the next stage of his career, or you can be young and ambitious. And I think Rich and I have both had recent experience of appointing um, you know, first-time maiden managers uh, who have come into the game. We had, um, you know, I was involved very much in my last appointment was Russell Martin, straight out the dressing room into a coach and the best thing that Russ did was create an identity um, you know, for, for MK Dons and he's obviously took that identity and carried it forward at, at his next club. Uh, Rich obviously was hugely uh, involved, his first appointment in football um, at Forest Green with Rob Edwards, again his first appointment as well. So I think we know what we're looking for when we do these type of things. Um, yeah, John, we're really hugely excited for you and wish you all the best at Portsmouth. Thanks very much, Andrew. Very nice introduction, and, and thanks everyone for coming today. I think there's a couple of things that are fairly obvious to me before even considering this, uh, considering the role or even coming into the role. 
The first was I knew Portsmouth from being a player, playing here, playing at Fratton Park. I knew the power of the fan base. I knew the power of Fratton Park, how difficult it was to come here, how difficult it was even when Portsmouth were away from home because of the travelling fans and the history of the club. And, and obviously in my lifetime, Portsmouth have had huge amounts of success. And I think they've been at the other end of the scale as well, as you guys will know a lot better than me. So I knew that coming into coming into the process. And uh, you know that's something that every time I come to Fratton Park anyway, as, a, as an opposition player, you uh, you love the place, but then you end up thinking, oh, this is just going to be an absolute nightmare of an afternoon for me. So I knew all about that. What I ve ve uh, then learned very quickly um, when going through everything with, with Rich and, and with Andrew and, and with the owners was that there was a real structure in place that I thought was extremely attractive to work with. And there was real ambition there. And there was long-term ambition and there was a plan and there was a vision and that had really aligned with everything that I had ever dreamed of, I think, in, in becoming a head coach or becoming a manager, and I've done that for a, a very, very long time. And that became really apparent, um, you know, quite early. And then what I say in the last couple of days, and what I'm looking forward to most now, is is feeling, you know, the effects of those multiplied together. Uh, it's been brilliant down the training ground today. Everybody's been unbelievably friendly and helpful. I think it was a great gauge yesterday to to see what the sort of reaction was when I, I suppose the the news started to leak and just to see how, how big of a, a deal this is for everybody in the city and the football club. And I'm, I'm really getting a feel for that now and, and it's something that's very exciting for me and it's, it's a huge, huge opportunity, huge opportunity. I feel that, I feel very privileged to be able to come here as the head coach. It's something that if you'd have told me a few weeks ago was, was a possibility, I, I probably would have thought it's um, you know, a bit too far out of reach. Having said that, coming into the role, I'm, I'm obviously confident in what I'm going to be able to do and how everybody here is going to be able to work together, um, simply because I think everything is in place for success and, and possibly from the outside it may not seem it, but uh, I've seen it firsthand and that's really encouraging. So to pick up on a couple of Andrew's points, playing style is obviously something that's, that's very big for me and, and what I've formulated over the years is, is a clear identity of, of how I would like my teams to play and, and that matches I think with, with what we'll be able to, to bring in on the football side with the recruitment department, with the sporting director, with what the owners want to see and most importantly really with what I think the fans want to see and you know there'll be no better gauge than, than that when we're a bit further down the line, we need a bit of time to implement that but a bit further down the line and you know we can see those you know, the, the fruits of the labour paying off and, and a bit of identity coming into the team and you know the football that everybody wants to see at, at Fratton Park. So I think a combination of those things, again, make this a hugely exciting opportunity. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a big, big moment, I think, for the football club. And what's been made clear to me is that you know, this, is, this is a long-term appointment. We appointed you for the right reasons and you're going to get all the support in the world that, that we can possibly give you. And all of those things, I think, have, um, I mean, the Portsmouth are set up for success. Uh, right now and, and way beyond that as well. So a privilege to be here and again, thank you very much for coming. I think just, just to add into to everything that um, Andy and John have said, um, I think probably the, the first thing to say, I think having worked really closely with Danny and Nicky for that extended period when I joined the football club, they had a lot of qualities and one of that was the, the alignment with the fans and the community and that was something that we took forward in, into this process and we felt it was really important that whoever came in next could could represent that because um, I think everyone has a perception from the outside of Portsmouth as to how important the football club is to the community and the people but until you get through the door and you're part of it you don't understand what that feels like and, and that's important for us because I don't know who said the quote, football without fans is nothing and, and we need the people here and we need them to support what we're trying to do and I think that that's a real key asset that we look for and also it, it's a, it's an absolute privilege to be sat here with, with people I really respect within the game and, and, and really looking forward to working with and we're, we're trying to create a we're trying to create a platform for this football club to be successful and, and people will look at the appointment and think it's left field or outside of outside of the norm but we we wanted to be brave and and we've not intentionally picked a left field appointment we've picked a candidate and John that we felt best fitted the criteria that this football club needed and we're going to do everything in our power to try and make it work and try and make it be successful and 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 I for one are really excited about it and there's there's a buzz around the training ground today people are it feels like there's a bit of momentum trying to gather and we're really looking forward to where that takes us.
absolutely we know there is a lot of work to be done. There, there's going to be bumps, there's going to be signs of progress and all these things, but we're really keen to see where this journey takes us and, and we're absolutely delighted to have John on board with us and, and we're all going to work as hard as humanly possible to be really successful and, and that's a prerequisite so sort of what this football club stands for and, and something the owners feel is really important. They want a hard-working football club and we want to replicate that on and off the pitch in, in everything we do. And, and to have John with us today is brilliant because we're we're, we're delighted with the when when we had the conversations with him the level of depth of understanding of the group and where we want to get to and that alignment across the wider club was really evident and 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 that for me is the most exciting part of uh, of working with someone who's got a real hunger to see this this football club succeed and and I I know the fans will get behind him and I think that will be a really exciting period for everyone at the football club and and we're we're delighted to be here. Um, and uh, something that was said to me, pressure's a privilege. We know that we're in a position here where people will have a spotlight on what we do, but we, we embrace it and we want to work for the football club and we want to make it successful. And we're going to do everything in our power to try and achieve that. Thanks, Rich. Has anybody got any questions or would you prefer to go straight into into one-on-ones? Uh, John, yeah. how do you assess the size of this challenge ahead? I think... For me, it's, it's throughout, it's, it's been about the opportunity. So the size of the opportunity matches up with, yeah, the size of the challenge because what we've probably had in terms of what you're referring to here is, you know, quite a few years now of, of Portsmouth just being in the same place, not really progressing beyond where I know everybody at the football club wants to be, least of all the fans. So it's a huge opportunity because because of that and because of the the I guess overall underachievement of the last however many years, but also the upside of that, which is the fact that really Portsmouth has got the setup to be a Premier League club in however many years' time, and I don't think there's a limit on where the club can go in the long term. And so the size of the challenge matches the size of the opportunity essentially, which and, and both are both are big. And like Rich said, it's going to be. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be bumps in the road, especially when you're essentially resetting and and trying to go again and, and some, trying to bring in something that is long term for many years to come. Um, and with that, it's just it's not going to be quick. There's going to be a lot of things that take a lot of time to to get right on on the football side and on the non-football side. Everything involved, I think, is is really crucial. So, uh, yeah, no one's underestimating. I think the challenge, but at the same time, what does that always bring? It just brings a huge opportunity on the other side. I mean, obviously. With your inexperience in coaching, is that an issue at all for you approaching this job? No, I think there's, you know, there's there's pros and cons. I, I obviously come into it with um, a heavy amount of of ideas and a lot of theory, and I've been very very fortunate. Even though on on paper, um, I only essentially ended my playing career yesterday. I've been very fortunate in my role at Oxford that I've had that coaching exposure over the last, uh, I think, two and a half years now. And when you go straight from playing into a first team role as I had been at Oxford, you just get the exposure that you, that you need. I think on a coaching side, you get the exposure to everything else that goes with the, the head coach role, the things you never think about as, as a player. And I've been very fortunate to, to have that and I think that's given me a real step up. So I don't feel I'm coming into the to the role with, with no experience whatsoever. Um, there's definitely some there, but ultimately it's about having the right support mechanisms around me as well. And, and that was a big part of, of the conversation with everybody at the football club. I knew that would come, might not be in place straight away, but I knew that would come and, and all the tools will be there to, to be fully successful. Neil, I think, I think um, just in terms of something I didn't probably articulate in my opening um, uh, presentation was we, 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 you know, we, in an ideal world, you want to bring the whole team in together, the head coaches, uh, the head coach with his team. That is not going to be just possible just yet. So the choice you have is to delay, continue as you are, or make something happen. And um, it was absolutely right that we, we be decisive. You make the decision now, and then we'll work on bringing the support team and the experience around John as well. So we've got a really good complement of skills in terms of coaching coming in. So we're working with John on terms of putting his team together, and we'll see some progress on that shortly. But uh, you know, we, we, we just have to make an, an, a progress today. Also, we had a fair few battles with Pompey over the years as well, from memory. So, uh, <laughs> any memorable ones there? Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty. I mean, one of um, one of I think Carl Robinson's first games in charge was was actually or his first game in charge of Oxford was here at, at Fratton Park, and I remember it really well because we went one nil down. I think Brett Pittman scored. In the second half we came out. Good start to the second half, and we won a penalty in front of the way end. And we thought we're back in the game. 
Alex Moat, who won't like me for saying this story. <laughs> <laughs> you all know, you all know. So I was in the side. Alex Moat takes the penalty, comes back off the post, and um, Nathan Thompson decides that something had untoward had gone from the build up. <laughs> and two, you know, 30, within 30 seconds, we've gone from possibly equalising to missing the penalty and being 1 0 down. Uh, sorry, and still being 1 0 down. Tough. So that was on my. I'd played at Fratton Park before that, but that sticks out in my head. And we've had some real good battles over the past few years. Obviously, the, the playoff semi finals, albeit, you know, I mean, to, to sort of re emphasise my point from earlier, when we came here, when Oxford came here, Oxford were actually delighted that there were no fans. And we thought this is a, this is a great opportunity to actually progress. Otherwise, you think you draw Portsmouth in the, in the playoff semi finals and think that's going to be a very, 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 very tough one. Uh, so there were those. Uh, they, they seem, everything seems to have ended in, in 1 1 for a number of years, but I yeah. think there's been a couple of really um, good encounters and, um, and spicy encounters over the past couple of seasons. And, and not just here at Fratton Park, I remember Portsmouth coming to the Kassam and massive away travel, obviously, um, which, which really helps with, with the atmosphere and, and just having some, some you know, excellent games. And, and like I said, as a, as a player coming here, um, I always felt it was special because you can feel the history of the ground and when you're in the in the tunnels and it's tight and you're coming out and you come up from those steps it goes one of two ways and most of the time it goes the wrong way for the away players but that's as long as we've got everything right on on our side and and that's a, you know the fans are the fans are 95% of that because of the atmosphere they can create and, and what they can do for for the away team and I'm really looking forward to feeling that tomorrow and, and beyond John. Say that again. Have you had the clear of the air with any of the players on your first day? I see Joe Pegg said last night you used the when you were working with him. Yeah, it was, quite, it was quite an interesting conversation with a couple of players this morning and my message to them was, I'm really glad I'm now your head coach and not having to play against you. So the likes of Colby <laughs> and the likes of Joe, um, yeah, it's quite nice to, yeah, to have, them, have them at my disposal rather than playing against them. So no clear the air talks um, at all, I think. I've had, I had a few run-ins with Ronan through the years. I think there's a picture circulating in social media about that. Uh, but I, th I think that's great. What do, we, what do we want to see here? We want to see a bit of passion. We want to see players that care. And any player, I think, through their career that had a, had a run-in, I had a run with, I thought, yeah, I quite, I quite like that. I, you've got to make sure you temper it at some point and don't, don't take it over the top. But... I funnily enough, I had a couple of those conversations this morning, and you know, we, we we spoke to the players as a group first of all, and obviously it's been a really you know, a whirlwind of a day. But I've tried to speak to as many players individually as possible, whilst picking the team and whilst taking training as well. So these things will come. We've got a busy week next week as well, where I'll have a bit more time on the away trips to sit down with with the players. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I might steal your phrase. I've cleared the air talks if there are if there are any issues, but. <laughs> It's one of the, I suppose, one of the nuances of bringing someone in who's played so recently. Were you nervous going into the training ground today? Yeah, I, I mean, nervous, still nervous now. I'll be nervous tomorrow. Um, I hope I'm nervous for the rest of my time here. I think the, the minute I step out and I'm not nervous on the, on the touchlines, I felt that as a player. I always felt nervous and always liked it. And it's getting the right balance between that becoming overwhelming and that driving you on to something else. So absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because of, of the challenge and, and I want to do well and, and I'm desperate to do well. And everybody here deserves to do so well. And I know what I'm representing. I know what this role means and I know how big it is. And of course, with that brings, brings the pressure that Rich talked about. And I think, yeah, a lot of nerves are quite good.